Hi, during these trying times of the pandemic, the City of Columbia Parks and Recreation Department realizes that choices can be limited in enhancing one's physical, social, and mental well-being. The Parks and Recreation staff have been involved in developing a number of videos in which citizens can participate in and enjoy in the privacy of their own home. These videos consist of arts and crafts, gardening, physical activity, and sports instruction, with many more to come as we work through this pandemic. Our videos will be available to you on a number of our social media outlets. We hope you enjoy and thank you very much. This is Doug Elliott. I'm athletic coordinator for the City of Columbia's Parks and Recreation Department. Um, and our series of videos provided to you for our quarantine time, in the name of uh, Mayor Benjamin and our department. We hope that you are being safe, um, you are practicing social distancing, and you're able to stay healthy with your families indoors and quarantine. I want to show you a series of fitness videos or fitness uh, drills that you can do in a very, very confined space, very limited equipment, maybe even only your body weight. I preference this with making sure you consult your physician before you take up, take up any exercise regimen if you haven't worked out for a long time. If you are someone who's uh, proficient in fitness, um, some of these drills may uh, assist you as well. Understand everything that we do as far as drill and fitness, you want to take yourself to a four to six week maximum to see a difference. Uh, so again, if you haven't worked out and something you want to do, again, pick a day, any day, which could be right now, which is a preference. Don't say I'll start Monday, don't say I'll start Sunday after church. Pick right now at that time. Uh, make sure you have the proper equipment, proper technique, pay, pay cl close attention to my body placement. All right, so the first set I'm gonna show you is that you can use with the chair, which is right out of my garage, or my old kitchen, but out of my garage, which is all you need, and a few, few weights. So we have a two 20-pound dumbbells, and we have two 10-pound uh, kettlebell uh, weights as well. You don't need anything. Uh, I've shown my children how to do these workouts with water bottles. If you get those gallon jugs with the handles on them, they can do the same things as these dumbbells and these kettlebells, all right? So I'm gonna go through a series of upper body workout and then a series, a really quick series of lower body workout. It gives you a complete total body workout just from this chair and this equipment. All right, so the very first one I'm gonna do is a uh, incline chest press. So again, understand that everything that I do is range of motion and maintaining a uh, tightness of the muscle that I'm exercising. So you won't see me going through these full ranges of motion with any of these exercises. Everything's gonna be com compact so I can maintain tension on all of my muscles. These exercises will only build lean muscle. So if your goal is to get really big and, uh, or really, really uh, muscular, uh, obviously these drills, these particular drills will not do that for you unless you add tremendous amounts of weight. Again, this is not the goal here, all right? So understand. All right, so in my chair, I'll take my 220s and I'll compress them together. I'll slide my, my, my rear end to the, towards the end of my chair. And I want to lean back until my shoulders touch the back of the chair. So again, I'm going to show you a side view in a minute. The goal is to maintain a straight line from the top of my head to where my, my bottom meets the chair. So I don't want to sag in the middle and I don't want to arch my back in the back, all right? So the goal here is I want to lean back, keep it close and tight, and I want to do short presses at an angle. All right, and I may have said this at the beginning. So the goal is to get 100. I call these the 100s. The goal is to get 100 of them alternating days. So I wanna do four sets of 25 of every exercise that I do. All right, so again, that builds lean muscle. That gets your cardio going as well. So you don't have to do a lot of biking or running or walking or whatever you wanna do. You can incorporate your cardio into this, this exercise as well. Muscle memory is also a, a big part of this. You want to put the muscle that you're working in your mind. You want to feel it contract. There's a difference between pain and discomfort. Be, be aware, all right? Now discomfort is something we can always manipulate ourselves. Pain may mean say that we need to stop doing what we're doing and seek other options. All right, so these things may put you in some discomfort, but as long as they're putting you in pain and you, you consulted your doctor, you should be okay. All right, so I want to show you a side angle of this as well so you can see how your back should look in this exercise. So again, tail out, weight pressed together, 
I want to lean back, straight line from the top of my head to my butt. This would be wrong, and an extreme arch also would be inappropriate. Straight line, tight, controlled range. And I should feel my pectorials. So you have primary muscle and secondary muscle that's being worked out in any fitness exercise. It doesn't matter what it is. You can do all the isolation you want. There's always a, ter a secondary or tertiary muscle being worked as well. My primary muscle for this exercise is my pectoral. I'm probably getting a secondary in my tricep and probably a tertiary in my shoulders here, but I want to concentrate on my pectorials on this exercise. So again, four sets of 25, all right? So after I do 25, I go to my next sequence in my upper body workout are called hammer curls. Again, I slide to the end of my chair. I take my 20s. Now what I want to do is concentrate on my elbows staying back. A lot of times you'll see people doing exercises and they're doing and they do a curl and they'll do all this. But I can't tell you how many deltoids, shoulder, probably tricep, uh, probably some, obviously some bicep when, when somebody's doing this full range of motion here. For your hammer curl, you wanna have your elbow back and you just wanna do a short range of motion. My elbow, my elbow should stay in the same place and I wanna come up at a short distance, all right? So with both weights, this is how it should look from head on. Weight to the side, elbows back, and I'm doing hammer curls. So again, they call them hammer curls because this, this emulates a hammer look, all right? Concentrate on your breathing. If you talk any track people, in through your nose, out through your mouth. Make sure you're contracting your core. This can be a core exercise as well. Anything, you should incorporate your core. All right? So I'm gonna do one set of 25 here. After my 25 of my incline bench. From here, I wanna go to my forearm wrist curls. So again, I told you I'm doing a complete upper body exercise. This is every muscle in my upper body. I'll come here like I'm doing an isolation curl. Now, a 20 may or may, may or may not be too much, may not be enough. Please, uh, tailor these exercises towards your knees. But I wanna do a wrist curl here. So this is working my forearm in the front and in the back. All right, so I wanna do probably 25 of these on each hand. All right, so once I do 25 here, I'll place my weight down. And another thing, as a precaution, if you have children around or you're working out with your partner, your husband or your wife, don't hand each other weight. Always put weight down, have them pick up their own weight. If it's too much for them to pick up, then go to something else. Again, go to the water bottles or just go back to the, to the body weight exercise. All right, and I'll switch hands and I'll do the same thing. Arm at a 90 degree angle, doing forearm curls. All right, so what I'll do is I'll do four sets of 25 of those. I'll go back to my incline bench, 25, Hammer curls 25, wrist curls 25 until I get to 100. All right? That is normally my first session of my upper body workout. My second session. So now I told you I wanted to do a full body. Now I'm gonna exercise on my, my, my three heads of my shoulder makeup. I'm gonna come back to basic curls and I wanna do dips that emphasize my tricep. All right? So with these same 20s, very short range of motion. I'll start here on my thighs. I'm slid to the end of my chair and I wanna do a short range of motion. So I wanna go about right here and about right back to my thigh. Do not let the weight rest on your leg. Again, the goal is to understand that tension is what builds the lean muscle, constant tension. And I never take tension off of my muscle, all right? So from here, I'll raise slightly and I'll go down. Controlling up and down. So the same space, time it takes to go up, it should be the same time it takes to go down. So you should not be doing this, letting it drop out of control. I wanna control it up, control it down. Posture in my back should be straight up and down again. Not, not hunched over and not a big arch. Raises to about shoulder width height. All right, from here I'll stand and I'll do a set of curls. The goal here again is for my, for my bicep. So the hammer curls work the long head of your bicep. Your regular curls accentuate the short head. And from here, you can alternate or you can do them all at the same time. I like alternating. And I normally do 50 of these. So 
so I can get 25 on each arm. So I'll be here. The, the inside head of the, uh, the weight is on my thigh. And from here, I just want to curl right to my midsection. All right. So again, this is, this is not the move. Hunched over. Everything else in my body trying to get this weight up if it's too heavy. All right. I want to be stationary here, controlling the weight. Only thing that should be moving and working is my bicep. All right. Feet shoulder width apart in a stable stance. All right. I'll do 50 of those to get 25 on each arm. And I'll quickly move to my dips. So seat, my, my bottom is slid to the end, edge of the chair. My feet are extended, toes pointed straight up in the air, hands right by my hips, all right? So it's important to understand the position of your hands to the working of the horseshoe or the two heads of your tricep. I like doing at an angle. That gives me full tricep extension. Understand, I don't wanna do dips all the way down to the ground. That becomes more of a shoulder deltoid exercise. And it also puts too much strain on that, on that muscle and could cause injury. So again, understand, short range of motion, constant tension. So I'll slide out, toes up, slight bend in my knee, and that's as far as I wanna go down, maybe four or five inches. I have constant tension on my tricep, all right? That's how that looks from the front. From the side, same concept. Out, here, down. I'm not going all the way down here because that puts too much pressure on my, on, on my shoulder complex. I want to do about right here. Controlling, up and down, all right? I'll do three sets of 25 of those. So now, those are my two routines I do for my upper body exercise. I've touched on my pectoral, my shoulder, my tricep, my forearm, and my bicep, all right? Now, I'm gonna show you my two routines I do for my lower body with the same weight, same chair, same routine. All right? Let me, I wanna show you my calf raises first. And understand, if you don't have a step like this, which is fine, I use the bottom step of my chair at my home, of my, of my steps at my home. All right, so this is just for demonstration only. Now, I do two versions of my calf raise. I do a heavier one with both weights. Then, and you, what you got, so, so the reason I do that is because you understand this is a fast twitch muscle, your calves are. They probably genetically won't get any bigger than what they're supposed to be. You can do all the protein, all the heavy lifting you want to. If genetically your calves are gonna be a certain size, that'll be the, be the case. So I do, do two different versions. This is called a mule carry calf raise. The idea is to put the balls of your feet on the edge of your step, the bottom step at your, at your home on your steps, put the balls of your feet right on that edge. What this does is it helps you flex your ankle. That's the only purpose of your calf, is to flex your ankle. You, you, think, you get athletes thinking that your calves help you jump higher. They aid in it, right? But it's, there's a chain reaction from calf to hip, I mean from calf to thigh to hip to uh, motion that helps people jump really high. I've seen people with no calves can jump out of the gym. I've seen people with humongous calves and can't jump two inches. All right, so understand, my feet should be shoulder width apart. I hold my weight right here on my, on my, my knees and I'm bent over and they call them a mule because normally you do these exercises with somebody sitting on your back. All right, but we don't have that option. So from here, I just want to flex them up. Up, down, up, down. I'll get 25 of those. So again, muscle memory, I want to have my calves in my mind. I want to see those calves exercising and pushing. So if you saw my motion, nothing else was moving but my ankles. The muscle that was working are my calves, all right? So I'll start off with 25 of those. I'll come back, same weight or no weight, and I'll do seated squats, all right? Here you must understand, your feet should be slightly wider than shoulder width apart. No one jumps with their feet here, if you're an, if you're an athlete in any sport. No one hits a golf ball with their feet here. In, 
at all. Baseball, football, you don't throw football with your feet here, right? So you wanna make sure your feet are shoulder width apart. From here, I bring the weight to this point, and I almost wanna stand straight up. So I don't wanna do this, right? I'm doing more of a lower back, probably butt workout than I'm doing for my, my quadriceps. I want to be able to get here, and I want to go up about four or five inches, come right back down. Down, up. Again, these are probably the largest muscles in your body, are your quadriceps makeup. All right, they are, some are considered fast twitch, most of them are considered to be, again, your largest muscle, you want to work them that way. So as I'm doing that exercise, I have that in my mind, constant tension, and I don't want to sit longer than a half a second. As soon as I feel my butt touch that chair, I'm back up. Back up. All right. A side view of this. Up. Down. 25 of those. So once I do my calf raises, I do my squats. All right. I have another exercise I call good mornings. Good mornings work your hamstring area, your butt, lower back. So I know I said on my upper body workout, I do a complete upper body workout. A lot of this is, is for my back, is safe for my lower body workout. Feet shoulder width apart, weight in the middle. So these are called straight leg Roman deadlifts. There are many versions of them, but I like to do the straight leg. So from here, feet a little bit wider than shoulder width apart. I wanna make sure my back is straight. Slight bend in my knees, not complete. Slight bend knee, grab my weight, and from here, I just want to come straight up. I want to hinge at my hip. Up, down. Straight line from the back of my head to the bottom of my vertebrae, all right? A side view of this. Again, my back should be straight. And if you see, I try to put my weight as far back in between my legs as I can. That's the pull I want. I try to extend them back there, all right? That's gonna give me that full range of motion from my quadriceps to my lower back, all right? Those are the first sets of my lower body workout. My next set, I told you, I take a weight, I, I reduce it sometimes, and my rail that's on my stairs going upstairs, I do a full standing calf raise with the weight. These are a little bit faster. Like I told you, these are fast twitch muscles. So I want to train them in that manner as well. So as I hold the weight in the middle, same concept, balls on the edge of the, of the step, and I'm going just a little bit faster. Still contracting my calves, only moving my ankles. All right, I want to get 25 of those. Now you may or may not be able to do this. It depends if you have a kettlebell like this or the normal kettlebell with the big round opening in them. And I really just started doing these maybe a couple of weeks ago as I was playing with the weight, sitting down waiting for my next exercise. I just kind of slid my feet in between them and I realized I could do a leg extension with them. So from here, if you can, this is just an option. If you can slide your toes in between your kettlebell slide your, your, your torso, your buttocks all the way back to the back of the chair, sit back. You may not get a full range of motion, but you get at least probably 80% of that range of motion you'll get in your quadriceps for leg extensions. Control the weight up and down. Don't let it hit down on the ground or on the carpet or on your mom or dad's hardwood floor or in the garage where it may chip the concrete. Control up and down. All right, and I'll get 25 of those alternating till I get to my 100. My last lower body exercise for these with the weights, I do on the floor. These are called bridges. Now you can do them with weight or without, but you will feel it. So with the weight, I'll lay on my back. I try to bring my ankles a little bit outside of my, my thigh area. Try to bring them back as far as I can. If you do it with the weight, have the weight sitting right here in control. Don't let it sit on your stomach. Have it controlled 
about quarter way down your thigh. From this position, I want to be flat and I just want to extend up. This is called, these are called bridges. Up, down. In this exercise, do not let your, the, your bottom rest on the floor. You want to maintain constant tension on your hamstrings. Up, down, up, down. 25. All right. So if you ask about my ab work, again, I'm contracting my abs on every exercise. So for those 25, I'm getting another 25, some form of contraction. Do not be fooled. I think you got to do a thousand push-ups, uh, or I mean, I'm sorry, a thousand sit-ups in error, or a thousand crunches. That's what's going to give you your, your abdominal setup. There's a combination of, of the three, and I'm, I'm sorry to mention this in the beginning. It's your sleep, your eat, and your exercise. You cannot negate one of them and only do two to see results. You can't do one of them, lift weights, don't eat right, and get three hours of sleep at night, then you want to see results. You must, you must be determined to control all three of them for an extended period of time. So you can't say after four days, oh, this is not working. I don't see any results. All right, four to six weeks is where you see results. So again, I don't do the normal sit-up. For one, people hold that when they clench their hands behind their head, they shouldn't do that because that puts an un undue strain on your neck. I do a bicycle kick with my hand hovering by my ears. So in this position, hands hovered by my ears, my shoulder blades, the bottom of my shoulder blades, the only thing that touches the ground. So my shoulders are slightly off the ground. From here, I want to be able to alternate. Both feet stay off the ground. So I'm not resting one and picking one up at a time. Both feet are off the ground as I alternate left, right. And I normally get about 40 of these, four sets of 40 of those. My other ab exercise is when I do my upper body workout. After I do my curls, I do a version of a Roman twist. So from here, if you can, I'll show you a side view in a minute. From here, you just want to kind of roll your shoulders. I don't know if you can see it from there, but my torso is not turning. If you do this at a certain speed, and you won't be able to see it or you won't know it, only the person doing it, your abs are contracting. Because the only thing that's pushing my weight forward and my shoulders forward are my abs. The only thing that's stopping the weight from going forward are my abs. These are obliques. You have an upper ab section and a lower. This works oblique and upper ab. So a side view of this would be here and here. All right. Real quickly, I want to run through an exercise, a circuit with no weight. All right, this is more cardio. You can add more cardio to this one, but you don't have any weight. You don't need any equipment for any of these exercises. All right, you may use a chair for your dips, but that'll be the only thing. All right, so what you want to do is come up with about, maybe start off, with maybe four or five of these exercises. In between each one, incorporate either an in-out, this is an in-out, you do here, then you do here. Here, here, all right. So now these are timed, that, that's where the tension comes. So you wanna start off maybe 20 seconds, graduate 25 seconds, 30 seconds, when you get to a minute, you can do all the exercises without stopping, all right? So if my time is 30 seconds, I'm doing in-and-outs, jumping jacks, 30 seconds, don't stop. Right, once I stop, I immediately go to push-up. 30 seconds of push-ups. Doesn't matter how many I can get, I just need to do them for 30 seconds. Now, in between that time, if I need a rest, take a quick five, uh, two, three second rest, then get back. When your time is up, you should be finishing your exercise. Push-ups, 30 seconds, 30 seconds, in and out. Back to my in and out. Alternating, in and out. All right, so once I do an upper body exercise, I do a lower. These are a little bit more deeper squat. Wider stance, imagine holding a kettlebell here and I'm doing 30 seconds of body squat. Up, down, up, down. Into my chair, straight up in the air. Up, down, up, down, up, down. 30 seconds, not a number. 30 seconds of squats, 30 seconds of in and out. Or you're gonna incorporate a jump rope. 30 seconds of jump rope, and I didn't bring one, I should have but 30 seconds of jump rope, all right? Once you do that, 30 seconds of dips if you have the chair. Back to our normal dips, no weight, 30 seconds, limited range of motion. 
30 seconds of dips, back to 30 seconds in out. So you're incorporating cardio in between every exercise. All right. So I did dips as an upper body. I'm gonna do an ab workout. Do some mountain climbers. Straight body. You wanna get touches here and here. 30 seconds. 30 seconds of mountain climbers. 30 seconds in and out. 30 seconds of lunges. Stationary lunges. So I don't have to, I don't have to need a garage. I need a short space. Step out, drive down, come back. Alternate left, right. 30 seconds. All right? 30 seconds of in out. 30 seconds of jump rope. I'm gonna go back to maybe 30 seconds of my ab workout. I'm gonna do 30 seconds of bicycle kicks. 30 seconds. Back up. 30 seconds. In out. All right. 30 seconds of standing calf raise. Kind of pigeon toe your, your big toe in. Slide up on your big toe. Hold at the top for a half second. Half second, hold at the top. Half second, hold at the top. Half second. And that's it. Then go, go back to 30 seconds of in out for your cardio or jump rope. Normally, if you're starting out, 20 seconds, two sets. As you add time, add sets. Excuse me, as you add more time, maybe add a weight, add a kettlebell to your, to your dips or um, to your push-up, which you can do, or to your mountain climbers, or to your squats, or to your lunges, or to your calf race. All right, um, I know it was pretty quick. Just wanna give you some ideas of some exercise you can do in a confined space, very limited, if no, none at all, equipment that's it, to your disposal. All right, thank you very much.